Hey, I'm Kelly Hogan, and I am so excited because I have with me Dr. Ken Berry. Now, we are going to keep this short because we have 30 minutes, but I have been wanting to tell you this for a while, Dr. Berry. And if anybody wants to skip this part, go ahead. But a lot of people have told me through the years that you have taken them from one of their lowest moments, and they heard your video, and then you have helped a lot of people. But I want to tell you about a moment when I was at a very low point. And within just a few minutes, you gave me one of the coolest moments of my life. Do you know what I'm about to say? I don't. Tell me. I was hoping you wouldn't. All right. I had just flown to Costa Rica for the reverse series. And I'm not a very good traveler. I'm a nervous traveler by myself. And I was already thinking, are you doing this? This is the scariest thing ever. I arrived at this house and it wasn't Charles, the director, but the producer lady who I didn't know, she said, hey, listen, shh, quiet. They're all about to record outside. And she's like, what is your name? I said, oh, I am Kelly Hogan. She's like, oh, okay. Um, we don't need you for the scene. I said, oh, okay. And I look outside and it was the cool kids circle. It was everybody awesome out there. I saw, I saw you. I saw Bella, Dr. Chafee. Help me remember who I was out there. Kilts. Oh, yeah. There were a lot of yeah. amazing people there. And I see you all out there with the Costa Rica mountains behind you. The prettiest scene. And I was like, oh, I would love to go. And she said, no, we don't need you for this one. We have we have enough people. And I was like, oh, OK. She's like, and who are you again? I said, uh, I'm Kelly Hogan. She checks me off. Okay, you can just go relax in the room. And I thought, what have you done? Why have you come on this trip? They don't even know who you are. You are not one of the cool kids. That's how I felt in that moment. Crumble. And then you looked in the window and you were like, you had a face like, hey. You said, Goodness. And I'm kind of momming like, no, 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 no. You're like, come on. So I walk out there and Charles said, oh, I think um, Dr. Berry wants you to join the scene. I said, really? Okay, great. And so we sit down. He said, no, guys, quiet. We're about to record. We're all sitting there very quietly. There's boom mics everywhere. And I went from feeling like the biggest loser to this moment right here. Do you know what you said next? What did I say? You said, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge that Kelly Hogan is here. And I suddenly wanted to die of joy. So I just wanted to thank you because I really <laughs> had a total lack of confidence in that moment. And you gave me, I still think about it often. I'm like, that was the coolest freaking moment because then the, the little circle was like, yeah, it felt good. Thank you, sir. Good, good. Well, the truth of the matter is, Kelly, that you've helped improve more people's health than the average doctor. So I think you deserve that recognition. Thank you. It was a, a really cool day. You you made it a cool day. All right. Today, I would like for us to tell people, I get asked a lot, what can I do? I'm desperate. Um, I'm obese. I'm diabetic. I'm dying. I'm sick. I don't feel good. What can I do? If you had to tell people one thing that they could change, what would it be? So I think the bedrock of all health is nutrition. Yeah. Many other things matter. Absolutely. True. But the most important thing, what I call the 80% solution, is you've got to fix your diet. And you've got to fix it and you've got to keep it fixed. For long enough to give your body a chance to heal. A lot of people are deficient in vitamin P and they need to start taking a daily dose of vitamin P. That's patience. Yes. It took your body decades to get in the mess it's in right now. It's not going to be fixed in a, in a few days or a few weeks. It's going to take some time for your body to heal. And for your body to heal, you've got to stop abusing it with all the chemicals that you've been putting in it, whether they're illegal drugs, alcohol, nicotine, uh, or junk food, all that's got to stop because as, as if you continue to assault your body, beat your body up, it's going to have to be fighting that stuff instead of spending that energy healing. 
So the most important thing you can do is fix your food and keep it fixed for long enough that your body has a chance to fully heal. If you were to describe, and I know you <clears throat> do, but in case, in case people haven't heard, you call it the proper human diet. Yep. And what does that look like? So a proper human diet, you're going to remove certain things from your diet and you're going to add other things to your diet because currently for the average person in modern society, what they're eating, although I wouldn't characterize it as food, it is called food uh, by, you know, the people who make it. So the number one thing you're going to do is remove all sugar from your diet. Added sugar, definitely, but also most of the naturally occurring sugar as well needs to go. Number two, you're going to eliminate all the grains from your diet. Wheat, rice, oats, corn, millet, amaranth, quinoa, all that, all of it, gone. None of that's good for you. None of that is health food. Number three, you're going to eliminate all of the vegetable seed oils. Soybean oil, peanut, canola, corn oil, sunflower, safflower, all that, gone. <clears throat> none of it's health food. None of it's good for you. So that's the three things we're going to remove. And then I think for most people, liquid dairy probably needs yeah. to go as well for most people. I'm sorry in advance, but yeah, dairy is for babies. It's not for adults. Okay. So if you're under the age of five, drink your milk, but if you're not, you need to leave the liquid dairy alone more than likely. Now we're going to start adding things. So Fatty red meat, which you've been told all your life causes heart disease, colon cancer, this cancer, that disease. None of that's true. Fatty red meat is our ancestral food. It is the food that we have eaten for just as long as we have been breathing air and drinking water. Literally. Right. Day for day, there's not a day that went by that we weren't breathing air, drinking water, and eating fatty red meat. So, yeah, you got to, so at least half of your plate up to all of your plate needs to be covered with fatty red meat. Yes. If you want some, some plants, make sure they're low carb vegetables. Okay. All carbohydrates turn into sugar, all of them. If it's the carbohydrates in um, steel cut, non GMO organic oats turns to sugar. If it's the carbs in a jelly donut, duh, everybody knows that's sugar. But there's a lot of stuff like, no, no, I drink only fresh squeezed non-GMO orange juice. That's literally a sugar bomb. Yep. Okay. So you got to do that. A, a proper human diet is ancestrally appropriate, meaning that we've eaten it for thousands of years. We've eaten it for so long that our body has adapted to it. And it's part of a proper human diet. A proper human diet is nutritionally dense okay it's full of nutrition amino acids fatty acids vitamins and minerals a lot of people think that the superfood plants blueberries aussie berries kale they th that, that's what they think of when they think of nutrient density not true at all not true at all even the cheapest ground beef from the discount supermarket has more, more nutrition in it than the, the, the most organic non-GMO kale on the planet, okay? So nutritionally dense, ancestrally appropriate. The next is uninflammatory. Oh. And this is going to mean different things for different people. That's why all the grains are gone, because they're full of carbs. But also for many people, they're inflammatory. For some people, they'll cause a disease called celiac sprue. And, and that they know immediately, oh, I cannot eat wheat at all, or I suffer, I pay. But many people are minimally inflamed by grains. And everybody knows that wheat contains gluten, gliadin. They've heard that. But what they don't know is that every single grain, including corn, which is a grain, contains these inflammatory molecules, these inflammatory proteins, all of them without exception. And so two things we're fighting against is too many carbohydrates, Number one, and things that cause inflammation in you. And that's going to be a little different for different people. Some people can eat the low carb broccoli and, and Brussels sprouts and asparagus. Some people, uh -uh, immediate gut inflammation, yeah. <clears throat> immediate skin inflammation. And so the carbs need to be under 100 grams. A proper human diet, by definition, is under 100 total grams of carbohydrates a day on average. Some people who are young and athletic and healthy and, and don't really seem to be touched by the inflammation, 
they can eat up to 100 gram, grams a day of total carbs. As long as there's plenty of meat and eggs on the, uh, the table, they're going to do great. Others have to cut it down even more. I used to be severely obese and pre-diabetic. I'm one of those people I need to be as close to zero carb as possible. That's a carnivore diet, right? And so for me, carnivore is not so much the inflammation. It's about the carbs. I've got to be as close to zero carb as possible. Whereas other people, even though they don't want to admit it, they need to be a carnivore for the inflammatory benefits. A proper human diet is the most uninflammatory diet on the planet. So it's a diet that lowers inflammation, lowers carbohydrates, therefore lowering your glucose and your insulin, moving all your other hormones back in the proper direction. It's a diet that's full of nutrition. And it's a diet that, that our species has been eating for a long time. That's it. Drink water, breathe air, eat meat, plus or minus some other stuff if you want it and you can tolerate it. That's it in a nutshell. Without the nut. Without the nut. I love it. Yes. All right. Do, do you ever work with anybody who says they're eating a proper human diet? And let's say we believe them, but they still struggle. They probably feel better. I hardly ever meet anybody that doesn't feel better, right? Yeah. yeah. But it still struggles with weight. Yeah, absolutely. Because many people have an undiagnosed thyroid condition. Yeah. That their doctor has failed to diagnose, even though the patient's been telling them their symptoms. Many people have a, an undiagnosed hormonal condition that's not related to the thyroid. Right. Many people have an undiagnosed adrenal condition. Uh, and then also some people are so metabolically ill that they, they haven't taken their vitamin P today. And so they're like, I've been carnivore for two weeks now yeah. and I'm still sick. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, uh, all of us are adults. A few of us have some gray hair. That means we're supposed to have some wisdom and some patience. Yes. And you, you know, you can't you can't have smoked crack for fifty years, and then stop the crack for two weeks and say I'm not back to normal yet. It's just physiology, and it's going to take a while. But now I'll tell you this, Kelly. I've seen more than once somebody who reports to me, dude, no, I'm eating perfect carnivore. And this is from somebody, I, this is one example, somebody I respect very highly, <clears throat> who's very intelligent, very honest. And they're like, no, I'm eating carnivore, 99% carnivore, blah, blah, blah. Uh, turns out they were eating a, a keto, uh, once a day, they were having a keto chocolate bar. And I'm like, is that made of meat? Because I don't think it is. Right. And they're like, well, no, but I mean, it's keto. I'm like, yeah, no. Carnivore is meat, yeah. mainly meat, a few eggs. That's carnivore. Yes. And so, it's, and they had been stalled for over a year, Kelly. Gosh. They'd been having one of these keto chocolate things every day because it was delicious. I'm like, yeah, I know it's delicious. They say that, you know, smoking crack is amazing, but I'm not, I don't care. It's sure. irrelevant. Don't do it. It's bad for you. She stopped the keto chocolate bar and within two weeks, she was already losing weight again. And this is a very intelligent woman, very articulate, very smart. She understand, stood all the principles of proper human diet, but she was blind to that one little daily keto chocolate bar. And once she cut that out, things started moving in the right direction. So almost always, if somebody says they're real strict keto or keto or carnivore, and I start digging into the diet, almost without exception, I'm going to find somebody who either A, hasn't had enough patience and given their body's physiology time to heal, or somebody who had a little blind spot for this, that, or the other that had was just part of their definition that they had to have that every day and they just weren't ready or willing or able to give that up yet. All right. Or you say they may need to also get some thyroid mm. testing done. Um, yeah. Hormone testing. Yep. I think it's really good for people to get, speaking of hormones, their insulin checked because that could have been sky high and that can take a few years to come down. Very hard to lose yep. weight while it's still sky high and it's a slow moving number. Is there anything yes. else that somebody on a short list, and I will link to your long list of True. recommended lab work. You've got a great video on it that I send to my group members every single month. But the short list of where to start if somebody says, I'm feeling good, I just can't lose weight. Yep. The the two most important labs, without without doubt, without exception, are an A1C. Okay and a fasting insulin. Right. Do uh, initially politely ask for those from your doctor. 
And then you will escalate that demand up until you are being rudely persistent and threatened to find a new doctor if they don't order an A1C and a fasting insulin. And by definition, the fasting insulin, you need to be fasted to check that in order to get a true number, 12 to 14 hours. Those are by far the, for metabolic health, there's no, no two tests are more important. The next test is a lipid panel. And now your doctor is gonna wanna focus on your LDL cholesterol and your total cholesterol. But what I want you to focus on instead is your triglycerides, which you want to be well under 150, and your HDL cholesterol, which you wanna be above 50. Those are the two important numbers from a lipid panel, not the total cholesterol or the LDL cholesterol. So that's one, two, three, four. And then the fifth lab, if I could only be limited to five, is this HSCRP. Those five tests are going to give you a better look at your overall metabolic health and level of inflammation than any other combination of tests in the LabCorp book or the Quest book. Now, yeah, there's many, many other tests that, that I recommend. I wrote a book about labs. Yeah. So there are many other tests you might need, but just to start, those five are mandatory. And depending on how far out of normal they are, oh, let's talk about the fasting insulin for one more second. Yeah. Most labs say anything under 24 or 25 is normal. Right. No, no, maybe, maybe normal as in average, but not normal as in healthy. You want your fasting insulin definitely to be under 10. Yes. And ideally five or less. Okay. That's, that's where you want your fasting insulin to be. And with those five tests, you're going to uncover almost every single sign of meta me metabolic disease or chronic inappropriate inflammation. Yeah. If you could beg people <laughs> to do anything past proper human diet and then if they're still struggling to get a little testing done what are other things that you think would make the biggest difference well Just the health and weight loss too yeah i'm a i'm a southern boy so it's kind of hard for me to beg but i will beg people <laughs> to eat a proper human diet i'll yes. beg you for that that's how important that is and i'll yeah. beg you to get those five tests checked yep they are but everything else you're on your own because i consider those things the proper human diet and those five tests, that's the 80% solution. Yeah. That's going to give you 80% of the, the knowledge you need, 80% of the food you need to be eating in order to immediately start to get more metabolically healthy, mentally healthy, dermatologically healthy, gastroenterologically healthy, and orthopedically healthy. Joints, skin, gut, brain, all that's going to start to heal with those things. Now, there are other things that matter. We, 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 he needed that earlier. There are other things. So are you getting good sleep? Mm. Are you getting enough good sleep? And it, it's not just the uh, length of hours. It's the quality of your sleep. And I've got two or three videos on my YouTube channel about how to uh, increase your odds of getting a better night's sleep. And there's all kinds of little tips and tricks I talk about in those videos. You got to get good sleep consistently. Okay. Next is dealing with stress. I hear people talk about this so inappropriately all the time. It, it's infuriating. They say things like, you've got to get the stress out of your life. Wow. I'm like, where do you live? Because where <laughs> I live, I don't know what, what you're talking about. Get the stress out of my life. What do we do with the children? <laughs> yeah, I think the definition of having no stress in your, in your life is death. Yes. When you're in the cemetery. You have no stress. You're just laying there all day. So if you're still alive, you're going to have stress. You're going to have stressful things that happen, bad things that happen, uh, bad things that happen to good people, bad people that come into your life. You're going to have that over and over and over and over for the rest of your life. And that's okay. It's actually a good thing when those bad things happen because it gives you a chance to practice handling stress appropriately. And that's the secret, not getting rid of stress. And so you got to learn how to cope with the stress, how to deal with the stress, how to let the stress run off your back like water, water off a duck's back. Some people are more anxious than other people, right? I'm the kind of guy that there could be smoke coming in the vent right now and be like, I'm sure it's fine. No worries. Right? right? Some people are not like that. Some people are much more anxious and that's not bad. That's good. 
They're the people that helped me get out of the burning house. It's like, no, dummy, that's smoke. There's fire. Come on, let's go. That, that's actually a good trait, but so many people have demonized that trait or they've medicalized that trait yeah. and said, I have an anxiety disorder. Do you? Or are you just an anxious person, more anxious than me? But at the same time, you have to learn and practice what to get upset about and what to let just fall by the wayside because either A, you if you can do anything about it, then fix it and shut up about it. Yeah. B, if you can't do anything about it, either make a plan to do something about it and then work the plan. Might take days, weeks, months. And number three, if you can't even make a plan for it, then you got to pray about it and give it to God. Amen. Yeah. Literally, that's your three options. Now, you could choose option D where you just sit and stew in it and worry, worry yourself sick about it, but you're not helping a thing. And you're really not literally helping your family, yourself, anybody who's close to you. You're making their life worse by doing that. So it's a, it's a four-step process. One, two, three, four. Fix it. Make a plan to fix it. Let it go. That's your three options. And those are the only three healthy options. Yeah, I used to be a very anxious person. I would stay awake at night worrying about very irrational things. Diet change helped yes. my mental health tremendously. Yes. Tremendously. Yeah. You know, I think so many people with a anxiety disorder, social anxiety disorder, generalized anxiety, they they've accepted that as a diagnosis. They're on medication for that. And as long as they continue to eat a diet that inflames their their brain. Yeah. It, it feels like a disease, but once they adopt a proper human diet and stick to it strictly enough for long enough, all of a sudden they're like, well, I mean, I'm still an anxious person, but I don't feel like I need medicine for this anymore. I feel like that's just a normal part of my personality that I should no longer be ashamed of and no longer call a disease. Yeah. I'm just anxious and that's fine, but it's so much better now on a proper human diet. I think I can start to wean down off that medicine. Another thing that helps people I think mental wise with anxiety and also with everything else, getting their glucose down, getting off of sugar because it literally helps break addiction and lose weight is, and you do this a lot, move outside. Yeah. Literally be outside and also moving your body under the yeah. sunshine. It's, a, yeah. it's huge. It's huge. And so that's another. And so when I first started this back in 2017, I didn't talk about exercise much, but it's super healthy for your body in hundreds and hundreds of ways. You've got to move your body. OK, we are an active species. We've always been that way. Now, do we sit around in the past? Well, yeah, we sit around in the past, but that was it was in between lifting heavy things, yeah. running fast, working all day, sweating, running, all those things. Right. And so I think the best advice for people is to just go outside and play. Yes. If you'll embrace that and be like, well, what does he mean by that? Literally, if you want to go outside and play on the playground, yeah, do it. Perfect. We love to play. Humans love to play yeah. mentally and physically. Whatever exercise you love. So if you freaking hate the gym, then going to the gym is not going outside to play for you, is it? You need to find something you need to do. So me, for example, my going outside to play is, is having a, a chainsaw and my work boots on and going to the woods and, and just tearing up the woods. That's my, that's my play, listening to an audible. Literally, that's my little heaven. The only other heaven I've got that's better than that is hanging out with nature. Right. And so, but what, what is it for you? Is it swimming? Is it biking? Is it wrestling? Is it, is it martial arts? Is it running? Is it walking? Is it doing pull-ups on a tree limb? Or is it is it joining the gym and going to the gym? I don't care. But you need to be getting sweaty and out of breath pretty darn often because that that's at least a 10% solution where diet's 80%. Right. Then at some point, and so what happens very often is people are so inflamed and sick, Kelly, they don't feel like exercising. Right. That's or right. they're so severely obese that if they got out and tried to, to jog, they would immediately twist the knee or sprain an ankle, right? It's yeah. not time for that. And what I noticed early when I was talking about keto is after people had dropped a significant chunk of weight and they had lowered the inflammation, it just naturally occurred to them one day, I think I'm going to go outside and play. And then they do that. And then there you go. And then the other thing you mentioned was sunshine. Yes. You got to get out in the sun. Yeah. Morning sun is going to help you sleep better at night. 
Morning sun is very important. The sun does not cause cancer. Getting a tan does not cause cancer. Those are myths. I talk about them in my book. The sun is good for you. So there's four things we've been doing since we were put on this planet. Drinking water. Yep. Breathing air. Yes. Eating fatty red meat and playing in the sun. Yes. So anytime somebody says one of those four things is bad for you, they're currently ignorant of what yep. they're talking about and they need to do some more reading. Yeah. Dr. Barry, I promised I was going to keep you for just 30 minutes. And if I honestly, I believe that if every person on this planet did only the things that we covered in 30 minutes that you shared, yep. oh my gosh, poor pharmaceutical companies. Absolutely. Yeah. They would all be looking for a job because they'd yes. all be bankrupt. And I think they could find better ways to spend their time and make money. I don't think they need to be selling drugs that we don't need once we adopt a proper human diet and a proper human life. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you for right. everything you have done for this community and for me personally. I'm grateful for you. Talk Thank to you soon. Bye-bye.